a mere 8.6 light years away, just twice the distance of the nearest star to the sun, is the brightest star in the sky, Sirius, a brilliant jewel of light in the constellation Canis Major, the great dog. It turns out that Sirius isn't a single star, but a binary system, in which the much smaller and dimmer companion is a white dwarf. A bit of a mystery surrounds Sirius. According to the folklore of the Dogon tribe from what is now Mali in West Africa, Sirius was once red, a claim supported by some sketchy Babylonian, Greek and Roman references. But today, both stars in the Sirius system are very obviously white. The brighter of the pair, Sirius A, is bigger, twice as massive and much hotter than the Sun, and is still making light and heat by fusing hydrogen to helium deep in its interior. Its companion, Sirius B, is also hot, but all of its matter, almost the Sun's worth, is crammed into a ball about the size of Earth. Now, here's the thing. Sirius B used to be the dominant member of the pair. It used to have two and a half times the mass of Sirius A, and was bigger, brighter and hotter than its mate. Being the heavier of the pair, it evolved faster. Gradually it swelled to become a red giant, and then over time, non-violently, wafted away most of its gassy contents into space. The white dwarf we see now is just the burned out core of that once great star. At first sight, the fact that the Sirius system harboured a red giant in the past seems to tie in with the ancient references to its colour. But the timescales don't work. The historical accounts go back at most a few thousand years, whereas astronomers estimate that Sirius B went through its red giant phase more than a hundred million years ago. The general feeling among experts is that the old tales of a red Sirius are cases either of misidentity with other objects or of poetic license. On the other hand, there is a way to explain why, although Sirius B couldn't have been a red giant in historical times, it may have taken on the appearance of one. White dwarfs come in a variety of compositions. Sirius B belongs to the commonest breed and is made up of a highly compressed carbon-oxygen core surrounded by a thin layer of helium, topped off with a skinny atmosphere of hydrogen. The suggestion is that a small amount of surface hydrogen might be able to worm its way down into the interior and then, with carbon and oxygen acting as nuclear catalysts, begin fusing into helium. This sudden brief resumption of energy making in an otherwise dead star would release a pulse of heat which, upon reaching the surface, would cause the hydrogen atmosphere to billow out to thousands of times its normal size. As the atmosphere expanded, it would cool and glow bright red. Calculations suggest that after about 250 years, the atmosphere would collapse again, losing its ruddy brilliance and returning the white dwarf to its previous state of dim anonymity. Whether this is what actually happened, we simply don't know. A more spectacular resurgence of the Sirius dwarf could also take place, but not any time soon. Eventually, Sirius A will evolve to become a red giant and, like all stars of this type, will have only a tenuous hold on the gas in the outer parts of its puffed-up body. Some of this matter will be captured by the dwarf companion, which orbits the larger star at about the distance of Uranus from the Sun. Little by little, Sirius B will gain mass at its partner's expense. At present, B weighs 0.98 of a solar mass, making it one of the heaviest white dwarfs known. If it managed to gain another 0.4 of a solar mass by pillaging from its neighbour, it would reach a critical mass called the Chandrasekhar limit, after the Indian-born American astrophysicist 
Subramanian Chandrasekhar who first figured it out. At the Chandra limit, a white dwarf can no longer support itself against its own inward tug of gravity and collapses to become a neutron star. But if the mass gain is gradual, as it is when a white dwarf in a binary system adds material at its companion's expense, and if also the dwarf is made mostly of carbon and oxygen, which Sirius B is, then something happens before the collapse has chance to take place. According to theory, when a carbon-oxygen dwarf gets within about 1% of the Chandra limit, the pressure and temperature inside it build up to the point at which the carbon and oxygen ignite in a runaway fusion reaction that tears the star apart in an explosion known as a Type 1a supernova. If Sirius B ever goes supernova in this way, it will suddenly become about 5 billion times more luminous than the Sun. What's more, although its release of high-energy radiation wouldn't be focused in the manner of a gamma-ray burst, it would happen so close to us in stellar terms that the effects would be devastating. We'd be stripped of our life-protecting ozone shield as effectively as if a gamma-ray burst had gone off hundreds of light-years away. But there's no reason to lose any sleep over this. Sirius A isn't scheduled to enter its red giant phase for another billion years or so, and even then the two stars of the Sirius system are probably too far apart for the dwarf to have a sporting chance of looting almost half a sun's worth of extra matter from its partner. The question is whether there are any other binary systems with white dwarf companions in the Sun's vicinity which pose a more immediate threat of a Type 1a outburst. Procyon, perhaps. It lies only 11 light-years away and consists of a star somewhat hotter and brighter than the Sun and a white dwarf companion. But the dwarf, with a lowly starting mass of 0.6 that of the Sun, could never gain enough weight to get into Type 1a territory. We have to go out to a distance of 150 light-years and a binary system called IK Pegasi to find the nearest realistic Type 1a supernova candidate. In fact, the nearest supernova candidate to us of any ilk. The two stars in the IK Pegasi system orbit each other with an average separation of only 31 million kilometers, which is less than the distance of Mercury from the Sun. The primary, IK Pegasi A, is bigger and brighter than the Sun, but is still a normal or main sequence star in the sense that it's burning hydrogen to helium in its core. Millions more years will go by before it swells to become a red giant. Its nearby neighbor, B, is unusually heavy for a white dwarf weighing in at 1.15 solar masses. When A does enter its giant phase, B will be perfectly placed at such close range to steal stellar matter from the giant's atmosphere and add to its own mass, steadily pushing it towards the Chandra limit. At some point, there's a good chance it will explode in a Type 1a event. An important factor to bear in mind when assessing stellar threats is that all stars are moving relative to one another as they orbit around the center of the galaxy. As it happens, IK Pegasi is speeding away from us at just over 20 kilometers per second, equivalent to one light year every 14,700 years. This means that if IK Pegasi goes supernova in, say, 5 million years' time, and it will probably take much longer than that, it would by then be around 500 light-years away, too remote to be a safety hazard. <laughs>